As we promised, this is the second installment of the issue of Torah study. If you uh, have been following very closely, which I hope that you have, you'll recognize that some of this material has become a bit redundant in the sense that we are dealing with subject matter from the Talmud that deals with the very serious uh, question and response that says, first, can a non-Jew be taught Torah? And then what happens if they are taught Torah? And what does it mean? And there are there is a, 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 a tractate in Sanhedrin 59a that deals with this, and it, it is a bit unsettling. And, and you would say, well, uh, and especially for the non-Jew, they would go, well, if I'm not supposed to be learning Torah, then why am I learning this course? And this is a good question. However, we're, we've got a good answer, and you should continue to study regardless. As I said, in Tractate 59a, it teaches that a non-Jew who delves into his laws deserves honor and respect like a Kohen Gadol. That means that a person that studies the Torah concerning the Sheva Mitzvot and all of its, all of its derivations, all of its connections within the 613, he's like a high priest. However, it states, a non-Jew who delves into the Torah that may not learn deserves death. This latter law applies only to in-depth or analytical Torah study. Now, superficial explorations of any part of the Torah are permitted to anyone. In this lesson, we're going to, to, to look at non-Jewish Torah study from the other side, the Jewish prohibition of teaching parts of the Torah to the non-Jews. While this prohibition devolves on Jews, it, 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 it has implications for Noahides and is therefore important to know. Chagiga 13b, teaching Torah to non-Jews, in Chagiga 13b, the Talmud states the following, said Rav Ami, do not give over the words of the Torah to a non-Jew, for it is written, he did not do to any other nation, and of his laws they were not informed. Psalm 147, 19 and 20. Tosavot to Bavakama, 13a, understands this verse as commanding a positive mitzvah to Jews to safeguard their unique relationship with their Torah. Let me pause for a second, and the idea must be inter interjected. Then what does it mean when Hashem says that the Jews are priests to the nations. What are they supposed to teach? What are they supposed to instruct? These are questions that need to be answered, that God willing, we are going to answer in this course. Tosavos to Haggai 13b asked a very good question. If the Talmud has already stated an injunction against non-Jewish Torah study, Sanhedrin 59a, then Jews should be prohibited from teaching non-Jews Torah because of the Lefni Ever, placing a, quote, stumbling block before the blind. This refers to Leviticus 19.14. After all, was a Jew to teach a non-Jew Torah, the Jew would be causing a non-Jew to transgress. Why then does Kagiyai 13b insist instead learn the prohibition from Psalm 147? Tosvos proposes the only answer that makes sense, given the circumstances. The Talmud must be talking about a case where there is another Jew available who is willing to teach a non-Jew Torah. Placing a stumbling block only applies when a Jew directly enables another transgression. If a transgressor should accomplish their deed without a Jew's involvement, then there is no prohibition of Lefni Evner, placing a stumbling block. Tosvos understands our case as one in which there are Jews around who are willing to teach prohibited Torah to non-Jews. In such a case, there is no issue of Lefni Evner. Nevertheless, the Talmud teaches that there is another prohibition in effect. And that prohibition is the one learned from Psalms 147. From this section and from Tosvos 2, we learn two things. Number one, a Jew cannot teach Torah to non-Jews because of Lefni Evner. However, if there are Jews 
available and willing to teach non-Jews Torah, then Lech Nehevra does not apply in such a case. All Jews are nonetheless prohibited by Psalm 147 from teaching Torah to non-Jews. Now in Bavakama 38a, a contradiction. The Talmud states in Bavakama 38a records the following. The Roman government sent two officers to the sages of Israel and they said, teach us your Torah. And they read it once and reviewed it and then read it the third time. And in light of what we have learned, this Talmud presents an obvious problem. What is the resolution? Tosavots again comes up with a rescue, proposing two answers. The decree against teaching Torah does not require one to give his life or suffer hardship rather uh, than transgress. Since the teaching of these two officers was a decree of the Roman government, the sages acceded. Perhaps the two officials converted, in which case teaching them was certainly permitted. Shalom Shlomo notes that Tosavot only provides two answers to a problem when one of the answers is somehow insufficient. The problem in Tosavot's first answer, he explains that it represents actual halakha practices. Perhaps the teaching of the Torah to non-Jews is prohibited even once upon a pain of death. Hence, we need another explanation. Perhaps the two Romans convert. From the Gemara and its commentaries, we learn a number of possible exceptions to the prohibition of teaching Torah to non-Jews. Let's look at a curious omission. Although the Talmudic commentators agree that there is a prohibition of teaching Torah to non-Jews, it is not recorded in any major halakhic legal codes. Now, many people who make their careers from teaching Torah to non-Jews have claimed to rely upon omissions to justify their actions. However, they are in grave error. Many of the later scholars, sages, explain that this law, in fact, not omitted in the latter codes. Maimonides and Shulchan Aruch both codify a general prohibition against teaching Torah to those who should not receive it. And later Poshkim understand that the prohibition against teaching Torah to non-Jews is subsumed within its general prohibition. Furthermore, the Shulchan Aruch records that it is forbidden to teach Torah to even uh, to Evid Kanani or Canaanite, indentured servant. This prohibition would naturally include teaching Torah to non-Jews. It seems that the idea of teaching Torah to a non-Jew is this sense of forced instruction, requiring Torah to be taught, is absolutely prohibited in the Jewish world. Thus, as a prohibition in joining a non-Jew from learning Torah is not something to be taken lightly. Obviously, it is punishable at the hands of heaven. Two Jews should not take lightly the prohibition against teaching Torah to non-Jews. To reinforce the seriousness of the issue, Rabbi Shlomo Loria, author of the uh, aforementioned Yom Shel Shlomo, writes this, Woe to those who teach Torah to non-Jews. Their sin is greater than they should ever possibly bear, and they should not see the redemption of Zion. What may and may not be taught is the next question. Now, all the scholars agree that the oral Torah may not be taught to non-Jews. The status of the written Torah, the Torah is not clear. Famously, Rabbi Tzvi Hirsch wrote in his commentary on the Talmud that the Pashkim, those who are the deciders of the law, have decided that it is forbidden to teach the oral Torah, yet permitted to teach the written Torah. Yet, for over 150 years, scholars have been mystified as to what Rabbi Chayas was talking about. There is no proper Pashkim who makes such a distinction. Support, however, might be implied in the earlier sources. The book that we mentioned before, Yam Shel Shlomi, seems to understand the Talmud's prohibition as directed only at teaching the oral Torah. We may infer that the Yam Shel Shlomo would permit teaching the written Torah. Now, there are plenty, though, who oppose teaching even the written Torah to non-Jews, most important is the, the Shelti Giborim, who holds that one may not teach Humash, but may teach the prophets and the writings. Now, we have opinions all over the place. We have ideas that um, one can't study Torah. Yes, they can study Torah. If they study Torah, it can only be the written Torah. Then one says, well, it can't be the written Torah with the Humash, 
but it can be the prophets and the writings. The Pashkim have not reached a clear consensus on this issue. There are some of the opinions of others uh, that we will list at this time. Rabbi Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin holds that it is permitted to teach the written Torah to non-Jews because God commanded Joshua to write the Torah in 70 languages. Therefore, it must be permissible to teach if God himself has ordered it to be made accessible to non-Jews. Once again, I remind them the Jewish people are priests to the nations, then what are they to preside over in their priestly duties? The Yehuda Yahala permits teaching the written Torah because the Talmud only prohibits non-Jews from delving, which implies studying the oral Torah. Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, in his Yaba Omer, prohibits teaching or or written Torah to non-Jews. Now, let's pause for a second. The reason why it's important for you and I to continue a scholarly uh, uh, ascent to understanding what did these rabbis mean when they say non-Jews? Are they using the blanket term any goy, or are they talking about the pious non-Jew who accepts the Sheva Mitzvot? Because clearly we have texts that say the opposite, that if a person has rejected a Bodhisattva and idolatry, and they've taken upon them the Sheva Mitzvot, and they believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then there is no Torah that they should be restricted from being able to study as long as it is associated with them understanding the seven mitzvahs. Now, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein and Eliezer Yehuda Waldenberg decline to decide completely between the Yamshel Shlomo and the Shelti Giborim, and their conclusions are hedged. Ideally, one should not teach the written Torah to non-Jews. If one does, he should not be rebuked because he has support upon which to rely, and one may definitely teach the prophets and writings to non-Jews. Their view is the most widely relied upon. Now, Rabbi Yosef Shlom, based upon uh, the Zohar, Rabbi Elishev states that one may teach no part of the Torah whatsoever to non-Jews, other than the, what's relevant to Noahide laws. Let's talk about teaching Noahides. The sages conclude that Jews are permitted and even encouraged to teach non-Jews as part of the Torah related to their Noahide obligations. However, the extent of what may be taught is subject to some disagreement and maybe continues to be a debate amongst the sages of Judaism to this day. The Maharsha is strict that only the basic tenets of what is permitted and forbidden may be taught to Noahides, but not anything else. They should be left on their own to delve deeper. Others, such as Maimonides, are much more lenient. The degree of the instruction that Jews may provide to the Noahide laws is a matter of varying opinions. Let's talk about one attending a Torah class. Non-Jews may only attend classes on material that is permitted for them to learn. Therefore, Noahides may attend classes on the weekly Parsha or very basic classes of Mishnah and Torah law. However, classes on the Talmud, Midrash, and Kabbalah are prohibited. Now, if one has a rabbi that is teaching them, and they clearly know your position as a pious non-Jew, and he invites you into the class, there is no prohibition. Your rabbi can make the decision to teach you what they feel that they should teach you. Bottom line, and even though we list these prohibitions and the opinions on the prohibitions, clearly it is not set in stone. It is not something very specific that says yes and no. It's not a black and white issue. If a non-Jew does sit on such a class, the question is, is must the teacher stop teaching until the non-Jew leaves? What well, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein was asked a very similar question. He answered that the prohibition of teaching Torah implies only when the instruction is actually directed or intended for non-Jews. If the instruction is intended for and directed to non-Jews, yet a non-Jew happens to sit in, there is no transgression committed from the side of the Jew. However, the non-Jew is transgressing his own prohibition by studying that which is prohibited to him. Hence is Chabad.org and many Jewish websites and the volumes of Torah teaching on YouTube. Just a matter of 20 years ago or 15 years ago, there was hardly any of those, that material available online. 
and now it's available for the full world. As I said in last class, who is going to stop you from studying Torah? No one is going to stop you. And by all means, if you desire to learn more about Hashem and learn more about developing and growing in Hashem, your Musar, your character traits, etc., then by all means, the whole book is available to you. Quick summary, Jews are prohibited from teaching Torah to non-Jews, meaning Jews are not to go door to door and proselytize or knock on doors and, quote, evangelize and missionize non-Jews. It is something that is prohibited. This is what this means when it talks about teaching Torah to non-Jews. It does not mean that if a person declares himself to be a ben or bat noach and goes to a Jew and say, would you teach me? The Parsha, would you teach me uh, the, the ways of a Noahide? Well, by all means, they should be allowed to do it, and there is no prohibition. This prohibition is specifically talking about people that, number one, are, say, being forced to be taught, and number two, those who would learn Torah law that has no application to that person at all. Once again, nothing stopping you from learning, but what's the point? Why study and spend energy studying parts of the Torah law that have no application to you, except maybe that it would help you understand Torah logic? I get that. That makes sense. The second thing in the summary is the sages agree that Jews should instruct non-Jews in the Noahide laws. Number three, there is a significant disagreement as to the extent and depth of the instruction. While non-Jews may delve as deeply as they wish and to their obligations, many authorities do not permit Jewish assistance in this. There is a variety of contemporary rabbinic opinions and practices. Four, we learn Jews may not teach the oral Torah to non-Jews. However, without the oral Torah, how are you going to understand many of the tenets of the Shavu Mitzvot? See, we're back at it again. Whether or not, number five, whether or not uh, Jews may teach the written Torah to non-Jews is a matter of some dispute. Nevertheless, it is accepted today that they may teach them the written Torah, including the prophets and writings. And six, we learn non-Jews should not attend any Torah classes that teach material prohibited to them. Once again, here's the caveat. The rabbi is your instructor, and you are invited to the class by the rabbi. There is nothing wrong with you attending the class. You're not going to catch on fire if you go into a study class. If a non-Jew does attend such a class, the teacher does not need to stop teaching. However, this continuous teaching should not be in uh, condoning a non-Jew's participation. The idea is if you happen to be in a Torah class that gets into detailed analytics of a text that is describing uh, the responsibility, say, nida, which is uh, the purity right for a female in a marriage. And, you know, you think, well, this has no application to me, and I'm not sure that I'm really, this has any benefit to me at all. There's nothing wrong with you acquiescing and just leaving the room. However, once again, as we have learned through this class and the last class, we do know that there is Torah law that states that a non-Jew cannot be taught the Torah then we have to ask them, what does that mean, cannot be taught the Torah? Does it mean only the written Torah they can learn, and, or is it only the prophets? Well, clearly, today, we understand that Hashem is bringing up um, a worldwide, um, what do you call it, energy of divine sparks across the nations that have accepted upon themselves the seven mitzvahs. And engaged in very serious learning of morality and character traits and justice, etc. And by no means do I think that the sages of Judaism want to keep the goy in the dark. That's not the point. The point would be is that the goy who are not dedicated to Hashem and the Torah will take these lessons of wisdom that they would gain and pervert them and twist them to their own, their own, for their own pleasure and therefore would be in judgment of Hashem. There are plenty of examples that I could give right now and just don't have time of the other religious cults in the world that have taken beautiful Torah wisdom and treasure and twisted it into a doctrine of control over people, control over their money, control over their, their health and their finances and their family. This is what Hashem wants to avoid and this is why 
that the sages of Judaism were very careful about encouraging non-Jews to study Torah. Clearly, someone who has demonstrated in their behavior and their actions that they are not an idol worshiper. They do not practice at any level shetuf in their life or any level of idolatrous thinking or practice. And clearly, nothing is stopping that person from studying Torah. Until next class, I say shalom and have a good evening.